Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. We've got a lot to cover today, so stick around as we dive into key topics, including NEO vehicle deliveries, what's happening with Chinese stocks, and how new policies in China could influence the stock market moving forward. Let's start by talking about vehicle deliveries. In the last week of September, NEO successfully delivered 6s100 vehicles, which is a solid performance, especially when compared to some of its competitors. For instance, NEO outperformed Zeker in terms of deliveries. However, Xpeng managed to beat NEO by a narrow margin, delivering 6,300 vehicles. One of the reasons Xpeng was able to edge ahead was the launch of their new affordable sedan, the Mona M03. This new model has started making an impact in the market and contributed to their higher delivery numbers. Onvo, another competitor, didn't rank on this list as it only managed to deliver about 1,000 vehicles, or more precisely, 800 vehicles during the final three days of the month. These late deliveries didn't make a significant difference to the overall rankings. Despite some strong competition, Neo held steady at the fifth spot in total vehicle deliveries. Moving on to luxury car brands, Tesla continues to dominate, securing the top position. Neo ranks seventh, but it's still performing admirably, even beating luxury brand Lexus with its 6 on 100 deliveries per week. This is a noteworthy achievement and underscores Neo's steady growth. Now, let's talk about the previous week's deliveries. Neo secured the third spot with 4,500 vehicles delivered, which is impressive, especially considering it was during a national holiday period. In the past, Neo delivery numbers would typically drop during vacation weeks, but this time, they've maintained strong performance. Achieving 14,500 deliveries during a holiday is a huge win for Neo. If we look at the two week total, Neo delivered 10,600 vehicles, and that's with one of those weeks being impacted by the vacation period. What makes this more remarkable is that these numbers don't include Envo deliveries, making Neo performance even more commendable. In comparison, Zeker, Xpeng, and Denza fell behind Neo numbers which shows how competitive the market is becoming. Denza, for example, ranked at number 9. When you factor in that the top two spots went to Li Auto and a ITO, both of which offer hybrid vehicles with gas tanks, it's clear NEO is holding its ground among electric vehicle makers. Now, let's take a closer look at the luxury car segment in China. Tesla, which normally dominates, only delivered 1,800 vehicles during this period, likely due to the holiday. It's interesting to see how much of an effect the vacation period had on deliveries, but Neo still outperformed several other major brands, including Zeker, Volvo, and Cadillac. Lexus, once a significant player in the luxury market, didn't even make the list this time. Neo's sales and deliveries continue to be strong, and with multiple auto shows happening across China, they are receiving a lot of attention and orders. Let's discuss what's happening with Chinese equities. Today, Chinese stocks experienced a dip of up to 10%. A quick side note for those unfamiliar with how the stock market works in China. Green here means stocks are down, while red means stocks are up. This is the opposite of what most people are used to in Western markets. The dip we're seeing today is mainly due to news that broke late yesterday about a new government policy. Essentially, the Chinese government has implemented a ban on borrowing money to invest in the stock market. They want to prevent people from taking out loans and using that borrowed money to gamble in the market. The fear is that if these people lose money, they might just default on their loans and disappear, leaving banks in a tough spot. This announcement spooked many investors, particularly those who had been planning to leverage themselves with borrowed money. As a result, we've seen a pullback in the market, with the Shanghai Stock Exchange Composite Index ticker, Zezenzenzen 1 dropping over 6%. Despite this dip, it's important to view it as a healthy market correction. Many investors remain optimistic, believing this is just a temporary pullback before the market climbs to new highs. There are still plenty of buyers entering the market, and some investors are even selling off personal assets like homes to raise capital for stock market investments. 
while the market may be experiencing a dip right now, it still seems like we're in a bullish phase overall. Now, let's talk about NEO stock performance. The company stock has also seen a pullback recently. On the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, NEO is currently trading at HKD 46.15. Meanwhile, over on the Singapore Stock Exchange, NEO price is sitting at SGD 5.99. While the stock has pulled back from its recent highs, it's still holding up reasonably well around the $6 mark. According to the charts, we are approaching oversold levels on the hourly time frame. For those who may not know, an asset is considered oversold when its price drops below a certain threshold, typically indicated by an RSI relative strength index of 30 or lower. Conversely, if the RSI is above 70, the asset is deemed overbought. When NEO was trading at HKD 7.6, it was clearly overbought. Now, it has entered oversold territory again, signaling that this is merely a healthy pullback rather than the end of a bullish run. If we apply a 50% retracement to the current price action on the Singapore market, we could see the stock reach around SGD 5.73. I don't expect NEO price to drop below SGD 5. But in the event that it does, it could signal a more significant change in market sentiment. The key levels to watch are SGD 5.25 and possibly setting a stop loss slightly below SGD 5. If you look from the perspective of the US market, NEO stock is performing somewhat better. On Tuesday, it closed at $6.25, which is still 8% below its previous highs, but not as significantly impacted as in the Singapore market. At one point, NEO had dropped by 13%, but it has since recovered a bit. In pre-market trading, NEO is around $6, which is what is observed in Singapore. Using Fibonacci retracement levels, I don't expect NEO US stock to drop below $5.19, which would be the maximum pullback. The minimum pullback would be around $6.16, a level we've already touched. Another key level to watch is $5.68. I'm expecting the stock to bounce back from one of these levels, as the overall trend remains bullish. This could present a good buying opportunity, especially for long-term investors. For those holding NEO stock, there's no need to panic. We're just seeing a healthy pullback, and I believe we're still in a bull market. While some people might be concerned about the recent dip, Especially if they bought in at higher prices, the long-term outlook for NEO remains positive. Looking ahead, I expect NEO stock to climb as we move into next year. By early 2024, likely around January or February, this could be the last time we see NEO trading in single digits. With deliveries ramping up, including those from Onvo, NEO could be looking at 30k to 40k deliveries per month. This kind of growth would propel the stock to new heights. As always, this isn't financial advice, but I'm confident in NEO future and expect big things ahead. Thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more stock predictions and market insights. Remember to turn on the notification bell so you never miss an update. Happy investing, and see you in the next video.